When you're setting up your solar panels and your batteries, it can be a bit overwhelming to figure everything out. Look, I know, I mean, I was right there with you. Don't worry though, let's walk through one of the simple steps to set up your charge controller. Now this process works for both deep cycle and lithium batteries. Those are the new, more powerful ones. First, let's do a brief little refresher of what even the charge controller is. A solar charge controller is needed in virtually all solar systems that utilize batteries. The job of the charge controller is to regulate the power coming in from the solar panels into the batteries. Now, why can't you just wire the panels into the batteries? Overcharging the batteries will, at the least, significantly reduce battery life, and at the worst, damage batteries to the point that they are completely unusable. Now, there's two types of charge controllers mainly. You have PWM and MPPT. Now, the PWM type controllers are more simple and less expensive than the other type charge controllers. The MPPT type charge controllers have the ability to convert excess panel voltage into higher charging amps, which basically means that they'll produce about 15 to 30% more power than the PWM type controllers. Now, if you want more in-depth information about what the difference is and which one's going to be right for you, you can find more info in the video that I did called uh, Best Solar Charge Controller for Van Life, and that's PWM vs. MPPT. There's also a whole solar series, which I'll link to the playlist below. That's super popular, and I've heard really good results from people that have watched those videos, and it, it explains things pretty well, I'm told. Anyway, that is all in the description below. So, maybe you're asking, what charge controller should I use? Well, the selection is based primarily on the panel wattage and corresponding charging current. For every 100 watts of solar panels, assume that there will be about 6 amps of charging current. The charge controller's current rating needs to be greater than or equal to the total panel charging current. Now let's give it a little example. A system with four 100 watt panels can use a 25 amp charge controller. Now I have 400 watts of solar, which is the same thing. So while 25 amps works for me, I opted for the 35 amp controller just in case there's a spike in electricity or if I want to add more panels down the road. Now it is very important that your charge controller system is properly tuned for your battery bank. An improperly set up charge controller can destroy an expensive battery. Now where do I get these settings for my own batteries you may ask? Well your battery should come with a guide or a piece of paper, pamphlet, something. Or you can always check on the manufacturer's website for the exact voltage and settings that you need to be setting your controller to. Let's take a look through my paperwork real quick. Well let's look for the battery manual and see if we can't find it. This isn't very pretty. It's actually dirty. I need to go vacuum. Look at this. This is a leaf. That's no good. Alright, so we'll pull out emergency fire extinguisher, ice puller, trash bags. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's something. We got the instruction manual for the remote. Let's keep that. Do we have anything for the batteries? Let's pull that down. Pure sign inverter, radio. Is this from batteries? Micro solar panels. Control panel, inverter, radio. And no, I think I printed one out. Well, I can't find the battery information. However, most batteries come with some type of uh, documentation, or if not, you can look it up online from the manufacturer. They're all, they're all a little bit different, like that you should charge them to maybe a 12 volt battery you should charge to, let's say 14.2 or something like that, or how long they should be in a float charge, something like that. Tuning for lithium battery banks is actually the easiest because they don't require equalization, nor do they need a regular full charge. The BMS or battery management system handles most of the thinking for you, but if your charge controller or converter are configured incorrectly and the battery bank gets too high of all the voltage, mm, that mistake could be very costly and potentially dangerous. Now, unfortunately for us, there are not a lot of lithium-specific charge controllers. There's just no demand for them yet, and thus no one manufacturing the charge controllers targeted at lithium batteries. Good news is, regular charge controllers will work for lithium batteries if they have the certain options that we need. Now, don't critique me too hard, I know it's a, a mess of wires down here. <laughs> So we want the control parameter. So we'll go to 17. Now, this is exceedingly difficult to do on the actual control panel, which 
is right there because there's only two buttons. Luckily, mine came with this remote control panel, which is way much better. It's graphical, it's got multiple buttons. I mean, it's almost mandatory. I recall one manufacturer has a lithium setting, but I wouldn't recommend using that one because it's not accurate enough. So we're back to the dilemma of the good old PWM versus MPPT controller. The MPPT is always going to be more efficient when you have a higher voltage array. So more solar panels means you'll probably be better off getting the MPPT. But that's not really what the lithium batteries care about so much, as they need a very precise way to balance the charge in each, each cell in the battery, and they don't want to overcharge at all. So being able to set the precise voltage set points is the most critical thing. So as long as your charge controller has that option, it should work. If you aren't wanting to spend that much money on a, on a really quality controller, you can get a PWM charger with an adjustable end of charge voltage. That allows you to turn off the equalize setting. I've heard some people say that they prefer PWM controllers for lithium batteries because they didn't believe that the 30% increase in efficiency for the MPPT controllers was that beneficial. But I've also seen in real life data to match the theoretical gains of the MPPT controllers. So if you have that extra money, I suggest going with the higher quality, more efficient MPPT controller. All these words are a little bit of a tongue twister, the acronyms and things like that. <laughs> Whichever solar controller you go with, the most important thing is that they can set voltage points for your lithium batteries. While I was doing a little bit of research for this video, I came across another video specifically about a new MPPT charge controller designed for lithium batteries. Now, I haven't used this one, and I can't vouch for its quality, but I've included a link to that controller too if you want to check it out and do the research yourself. My system is 12 volts, but they also offer a 48 volt model for a little bit more money. I think it's like 20 bucks more. If you're looking to get any of the gear here, I've got links below to some of the best price options that I've found, and links to specific gear that I'm using myself for my AGM batteries. Now you should consider clicking those because it gives me some extra points and makes you feel extra good. Plus, most of the things in the links have free shipping if you spend over $50, and all these items are more than $50, so you'll get free shipping. As always, if you have any questions, hit the thumbs up icon and leave a comment and I'll answer it as soon as I can. I'm not a doctor, but I know a little bit about solar and I'm here to help. If you're looking for the full in-depth solar panel, solar system setup, you can find all that in a link to the playlist at the end of this video and also in the description. I've covered basically every part you're gonna need for solar systems, the batteries, the charge controllers, inverter if you need it, fuses, wiring, things like that. It's very helpful.